Hi guys, it's my Steve Yanga again with the financial drive through and have I got a drive through for you today. So today we're going to talk a bit about cryptocurrency adoption, the use of the blockchain, how it's really melding with society and all. And after a couple of these headlines, we're going to round off with some talk about cryptocurrency blockchain job listings. So if you're interested in that online gig, stick around. Let's drive through. So, first on our list, Lightning Network allows bar in Berlin to create functional POS system with Bitcoin. So the bar in Berlin, known as Room 77, has seen some Bitcoin fans set up a fully functional point of sale system using the Lightning Network. This allowed their patrons to pay for beer in BTC, but also acts as one of the first proof of concepts of the Lightning Network in action, which brings Bitcoin a step closer to being used as a real currency. So we have a video of that happening over here. I'm just gonna pop that up. I was like so pleased when I saw that video because the Lightning Network is basically what's going to give Bitcoin true adoption, you know, as far as use case scenarios are concerned. Here they say the Lightning Network has been deployed for many months, but has so far not been implemented in any actual businesses. So this is going to be like the first real use case scenario for it. And there's video evidence, guys. So yeah, that's a cool one. Next up. We see a banking mogul, MUFG, appreciates Ripple for inexpensive and faster money transfers. Jumping right into that, Ripple is making it big in the banking sector and Mitsubishi UFJ Financial Group, that's MUFG, came in with hands full of appreciation for them, right? Now, there's another video over here, which is going to play this real quick. Let me talk a little bit more about how we're using this and why it's important to us. You might be asking, why does this really matter to us as a bank? Well... We operate in more than 50 countries as a, corp, as, a, as, a, as a bank around the world. So more than 50 countries have branches and operations, and we have to move money between all of those operations every day, and significant amounts of money. We've got a number of multinational corporates um, that operate across all of those, so there are huge liquidity flows occurring every day. Um, today, for many of us, we may have to go through kind of swift um, and incur charges, uh, many intermediary banks are uh, part of that. And typically an SLA for fund transfer movements is between one and three days. You know, using technology such as Ripple, we can get that down to something like 30 seconds, uh, which is significantly different uh, and at a cheaper cost as well. So, so they're basically giving Ripple all the accolades for that. And personally, I think it's really good to see when cryptocurrency gets you know, the credit it deserves for what it can do. Here we see a real estate business integrate smart contracts. The experiment was carried out in collaboration with Blockchain Global Limited, as reported by the real estate company. Now the two businesses became partners back in April to design a settlement network as well as a virtual registration data inquiry system. Now the trial represented a simple two-way involvement. A seller who offered for listing a property and a buyer seeking to purchase it, right? Now, after the product was chosen, the buyer filled his or her offer and waited for the seller's confirmation. So what they were saying was that as soon as the system confirms the remittance of the virtual currency, they will execute the contract and convert the virtual currency to Japanese yen. In addition to that, a notarized sale and purchase agreement is promptly shared with the buyer and the seller at the same time. I mean, this is all efficiency. This is just all coming together with the blockchain. Now, according to the company, using smart contracts as well as cryptocurrency power transactions will help buyers and sellers to drastically shorten the time required for processing each operation, counting deposits and funds. I say all this is good news. And then this was one that I actually found particularly interesting. Today's students could spoil Bitcoin adoption within the next decade. Now, a decade is a long time as far as I'm concerned because we're smack in the middle of it. And I, and I mean, I definitely want to be part of this movement like sooner rather than later. So, you know, I'm really hoping, you know, adoption picks up. 
especially in Africa. I mean, there's so many use case scenarios. I'm really looking out for a time when adoption is like mainstream, like it will be crazy. But jumping right into this now, they said student behavior is usually a good indicator of how successful new technologies could be in terms of adoption, right? And according to a survey, 18% of US students say they own Bitcoin or other types of tokens, which is twice as high as the general public's ownership rate of only 9%. Now, the study concluded that Bitcoin, as well as other cryptocurrencies, could go mainstream within the next decade and will become widely accepted as a payment option. Now, numerous crypto experts have been blaming slow adoption as one of the factors hindering the market recovery. And low user volume is even suspected as one of the reasons for the market's volatility. Now, an increasing number of universities are now offering classes on cryptocurrency and blockchain. So according to Coinbase, 42% of the world's top 50 universities are now offering blockchain and crypto subjects. It's taken over, guys. It's taken over. Now, the article rounds up with some food for thought, saying cryptocurrencies would need to overcome challenges and issues posed by regulation, volatility, privacy, scalability, usability, and incentive. And I believe I strongly agree with that. So... I mean, do drop a comment in the comment section. Let me know what you think about this article. This is something that I think we could talk about. More cases for cryptocurrency adoption. Yahoo Finance launches cryptocurrency trading features. Now, the world's sixth most visited website, Yahoo Finance, is now offering cryptocurrency trading. Go figure. Here we see a tweet from Anthony Pompliano, who's also known as Pomp. He says you can now buy Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Litecoin on Yahoo Finance. And he goes, the virus is spreading. Next up, one of the most notable headlines of the evening as far as I'm concerned. It's titled, World Bank Bond Blockchain Offers Key Insights. This article is about a first-of-its-kind blockchain bond issuance by the World Bank. In partnership with the Commonwealth Bank of Australia, they used a private Ethereum blockchain to sell a two-year bond worth 110 million Australian dollars, that's about 79 million dollars, to seven investors. Now, the Commonwealth Bank played the role of the dealer, essentially that of an underwriter, and the two institutions were the only ones running nodes, of which there were just four in total. The fact that they could both witness and confirm the investors' purchases in real time removed the need for time-consuming reconciliation and offered real efficiency gains. So this is big. This is actually really big. So here they say the World Bank's experiment showed that a blockchain bond could potentially reduce the settlement problem to seconds rather than days. And they also add that the cost savings could be significant. Apparently, the World Bank issues 50 to $60 billion in bonds every year. Go figure. The article goes on to say that the fact that the World Bank is taking on a lead role in experimentation with blockchain technology is quite significant. Either way, one thing is for sure, all of this will provide valuable learning, if not for the World Bank alone, its government parties, direct financial institutions, you and I, I mean, everybody that's involved in the capital markets. This is a good thing. Little victories when you think about what the blockchain is doing and what the blockchain is going to do in the near future. And I mean, it's all over the news. Here you see Samsung sets to simplify transactions between various banking systems using the blockchain. Hong Kong is accepting blockchain immigrants. They're calling it the uh, Quality Migrant Admission Scheme. And basically, they're trying to attract talent from around the world in the field of blockchain and other innovative technologies. Blockchain specialists who want to receive preferences when obtaining a visa must have a bachelor's degree or higher and they should also have experience working in well-known companies and knowledge of how to apply technology in financial services so if that's you check it out more positive blockchain news pwc global survey says that corporates are gearing up for the big push in the blockchain and i think by now we can all agree and for our question of the day, I'm still on this. Let me know what you think is the most useful thing you could do with the blockchain right now. Hit me up in the comment section. Drop something in the comment section. Let me know what you think, okay? And we're going to round up today's drive through with the last bit of news. Investor Information Portal launches jobs board for cryptocurrency industry. So the gist of it is you can find a job at ICO Bazaar and it was launched at the end of August. So right now, the jobs board is said to have already over 300 companies listed with more than a thousand positions needing to be filled. So there are jobs. There are actual jobs. So I checked out the site. It's jobs.icobazaar.com. I've put it down in the details section of the video, so check it out. 
And I think it's pretty nifty because, I mean, right away you could see the companies that are hiring people. You can see the top employers, all the vacancies in the crypto world right now. So if you want to post a job, if you have something, maybe you're building your own blockchain. If you have some jobs, you can also post them here. There's career advice, how to headhunt outside blockchain. I mean, there's so much stuff. And I mean, you could definitely subscribe if you want to do that and keep tabs on it. And that brings us to the end of our drive through. I really hope this has been helpful or useful to somebody, especially the part about the jobs. I know a lot of people want to have the flexibility to be able to stay at home and work. And, you know, it'll be great if some of you can actually get this. If you like this kind of content, definitely, definitely do let me know in the comment section so I can fine tune the kind of content I put out on the channel. And that said, please smash the like button. It helps with YouTube visibility. Do hit the subscribe button so you can catch my videos as they drop. My name is Majesty Bianga and I'll catch you on the next drive through. Thank you.